So, as you saw <coughs> by the title of today's video, I'm going to talk about a little, uh, about a rather strange or mystic subject yet again. That is to say, dream incubation for the healing of physical symptoms, the physical symptoms of your body. You can ask to have a solution to your illness to be communicated to you in your dreams. I have done this on numerous occasions and I know others have done this on occasions and in fact you can have uh, solutions in your dreams not only just for yourself but you can actually ask to have solutions uh, to physical symptoms, to life problems to anything for someone else as well and I'll tell you a story in a minute but first I'll read you a little um, post that I did on social media on Facebook a few years ago re regarding this regarding this uh, dream incubation for the um, uh, healing of physical symptoms what am I what I mean by the word incubation it just means you are incubating your uh, you're turning inwards that's what incubation really means. It simply means turning inwards. All your attention flows inwards. The outside uh, life of society and your, your, you know, your work, your kids, your, your family, your friends, your partner, your pets, <coughs> you know, they have to be uh, put away for a while. For, you know, that doesn't have to be permanently, but just for until you receive the answer from within. And, and then you sleep more and dream more. You always, rem you always dream. Every night you dream. You might not remember because perhaps uh, you have taught yourself <coughs> the dreams that you have are not pleasant, so you choose to forget them. But remember the dreams, uh, everyday dreams, or most of the, almost all of the dreams every day relate to where you are in relationship to your inner self and by inner self i mean your life was your libido where are you on the ladder of transformation towards wisdom let's say towards the uh, you know life was a libido becoming a source of wisdom for you so the first three instincts like i said before are your hoarding reproduction and power this is the animal instincts of survival so you know if you still have dreams for instance where you are being attacked or being lost in a dark place being attacked by animals or such things that might refer to those three instincts are still not internalized you haven't integrated into yourself that's the shadow jung talks about the shadow that's the shadow side of us and then if you do manage to integrate this the, 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 the life force, the libido changes, it becomes your inner guide, someone luminous, uh, archetype of the wise old man, wise old woman, uh, you know, someone, it might be even a young or baby or, or, or not a baby, but a small child that has superpowers and knows more. Uh, perhaps I have related to you the dream about the, uh, the frog that turned into a boy, a prince that knew everything. Yeah, so that uh, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is dream incubation. That's what I mean by dream incubation. So I'll just read you uh, the story about, you know, asking the dreams to give you solutions to your physical symptoms, your illness. And this is what I wrote. One time I was struggling with a health issue and instead of seeing them, my doctor, I decided to see if I could get an answer in dreams as to what could be done. So I was incubating. Thus, I stayed with the question for a day or two, always focused on the issue while remaining detached uh, from too much worldly activity, looking inwards. Again, that's, that's incubation, that's what I mean by incubation. Sure enough, perhaps on the following night, in a dream, I was together with a luminous figure. Actually, the luminous figure was um, sort of a, a doctor, but a shaman-like doctor. He wasn't, you know, dressed in white coat with a stethoscope and, you know, poking me with a stick into my throat or anything like that. He just knew exactly. He was an old man, you know, bearded old man. He knew exactly what was wrong. A <coughs> luminous figure who once having examined me declared the remedy. He knew exactly. He said to me, do this, 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 
and it, the symptoms will away will go away. I woke up rejuvenated, having remembered the whole story and the situation to my uh, and the solution to my illness. And before I could forget the instructions, I did exactly as I was told. So this is important because we tend to forget our dreams. The moment we wake up, the world takes over, our, our life in society takes over, and the dream is gone. So the, when you wake up, the first minute or two is important because you're still in there. The information is still being fresh. But once you wake up or the alarm wakes you up and the, someone starts talking or you turn on the radio TV, it's gone. It's very, very difficult to remember afterwards. So it's important, uh, you know, to have a dream journal. Write it down straight away. Even if you wake up in the middle of the night. I don't know how many times I woke up in the middle of the night and I wrote down what the exact words were. I, don't I could never remember the exact words later. But the exact words are also important. There's, you know, there's something in them that, that needs to be communicated exactly as they are. It takes practice, but you can do it. So, exactly as I was told, to my delight and surprise, for how can you not marvel at the mystery of, uh, of access to our inner resources and insight of the soul, as soon as the remedy was applied, the symptoms went away. Exactly, the symptoms went away. For me, at least, the symptoms went away <laughs> immediately. There are others, uh, you know, I know some other people that, you know, the symptoms n will not go away immediately. You have to work on them. That the solution is not a, you know, it's not a magic pill. It will uh, require for you to uh, work on it longer. You know, you, you need, to, there will be a regime that you might need to change. The way you think usually needs to be changed. Remember, nearly all sicknesses is psychosomatic. It starts in your head. If you believe yourself to be so and so and so, or sick, you will get sick. Of course, there's the uh, things such as, you know, you're genetically inclined to be more sick than the rest of your family. In certain ways, you know, cancer sometimes works that way. But even with cancer, you know, you... Um, how can I explain this? I think Joseph Campbell explained cancer best when he said that uh, uh, cancer is, uh, you know, you, you're on your head getting in the way of uh, listening to your heart. A lot of, a lot of this is, uh, it is like this. Because if you look at the cancerous cells, the cancerous cells just grow. They never die. They constantly grow, 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 grow. They never renew themselves. They never die and renew. That's what it's meant by cancer. Cancer just grows, grows, grows until, until you're so sick that you, that you die. It, the body is trying to tell you to slow down, you know, die to the outside world a little, to the ego, and see what happens inside you. You know, that's what it means by letting go of the head and allowing the heart, the intuition to lead the way. Okay? So let's see what else did I write. This is what I mean when I post about having your own mystic, mystic experience. Um, it uh, does not have to be about the meaning of life or how many levels of con consciousness there are to heaven exactly, or anything as dramatic as that, as, or as deep as that. In fact, you can pretty much ask about anything, whether personal or for someone else. I'll tell you a story about this in a minute, asking for someone else. For the mystic stone of the feminine mystery of the soul, I mean here intuition, that lives in you and in, and in me in all, crea in all creation, this energy, consciousness, this life force that, that is within you, that it is really our libido, our, our, uh, you know, our, our, our survival, not survival instincts, but our energy, that, that uh, consciousness that gives us this, this life and gives the life to, to everything, to the cosmos. Uh, creation seems to be able to conjure up answers and solutions apparently uh, for everything and anything as long as you are uh, sincere about your desire to know yeah the direct mystic method of learning as, uh, as well known amongst the shamans of the past uh, 
as Knud Rasmussen observes in his account with the Eskimo shaman Ing Jung Churug and his con con uh, description of initiation rite. And this is the shaman that is saying this. As a matter of fact, there is no limit to the period of the study. It depends on how much are you willing to suffer and anxious to learn. Exactly. You, you know, he's saying here you can be learning about anything, anything you want. <laughs> it just depends on how much you're willing to suffer. And by suffering, he means incubation, really. Because this is what we find the hardest in our Western society. To detach ourselves long enough from the outside stimulus, the stimulation of the news and the social media and our family, our work, all the demands that are pray, placed on us constantly. You know, if you manage to get yourself away from this, you know, a day, it starts with a day or two of, of, of solitude just by yourself and then sleeping more. And then something might happen. What you're looking for is um, where your survival instincts finally give way to something better. That is to say, instead of uh, looking outside to hoarding things or making more, or having more kids or you know holding on to power, you find within you a better a better solution to life. Something is better within you than what is offered to you in the outside in society. That changes not only your psychological, but the way the energy flows. The way your libido, psych psyche, which couldn't be called psychic energy as well, flows. It doesn't flow outside to projections, but you're keeping the projections within you. You're not leaking. You know, Marie-Louise -Louis von Franz would have said, don't leak. That's the rule of thumb. Don't project. And then something happens. You find that the, that, the, that the instincts have changed from something dangerous to you <coughs> to something which is helpful to you. It is, it is inwarded now, introverted. And it becomes your inner guide. Then you, got the, you can have the dreams of a helpful uh, child or a helpful wise old man, wise old woman, the archetypes of the wise old man, or someone that knows more and is more, uh, you know, uh, sometimes that, someone that knows a lot more than you. So it can be also physical strength. A friend of mine uh, not long ago uh, had a dream of climbing up the mountain and uh, had dead son <coughs> who died a few years ago. Uh, he had uh, MS, he couldn't walk, he, his, his nervous system was shutting down when he died. Uh, you know, he couldn't move. And uh, he was being helped up that mountain by a great big, um, uh, like a troll, like, um, like a giant. But this giant was helpful and gentle. So there's your energy that is, you know, can be very powerful, can be very da dangerous as well because it's got strength. It will overwhelm you, but it can be also when you have sublimated the energy inward, it becomes your guide, becomes your friend, your inward friend, your inner guide. So that's important to understand this. This is really incubation or sublimation. Yeah, it doesn't mean you need to become a monk or a nun <coughs> or become. Uh, completely, um, uh, you know, don't enjoy in the uh, company of humans and have intimate connections with humans. It doesn't mean that, but when you are working on this, when you're working inwardly <coughs> on eventually stopping the leak, stopping all the projections, the more you work, the more your energy will flow inward and the less you're going to project and the more that energy will become your inner guide, become more archetypal. A goddess, you know, a god, like in the dream with the, I shared with you with the, with the uh, frog. The frog turned into a prince and the prince knew everything. Yeah. So now I'm going to just give you a story that you can, you can dream for others as well. If you, have, if you know someone or someone needs help, you can ask help from within. Let me have a look at the time. Yep. Well, you can ask help. Uh, for that someone from your inner guides from your from the contact from your inner contact with the soul yeah um, and that solution will be given to you in your dreams or your visions or your intuitively and you can communicate that uh, solution to that person so one time 
um, this is this is a dream this is a story told to me uh, a long time ago by a friend of mine someone <coughs> someone had a, he had a dream for his friend and the dream was that if his friend were to travel again where he traveled before at the airport waits for him a pregnant woman the warning was that if he does doesn't listen to the dream doesn't listen to the warning he will travel again he will get someone he will get he will get someone pregnant and and there's going to be trouble from that and of course the dream was related to him my friend related the dream to his friend but uh, but the young man didn't listen. He traveled. He met a girl at a party somewhere. Apparently, he got her pregnant. She didn't tell him that uh, she uh, wanted to keep the child. She kept the child. Only told him after the child was born. And then started hunting him all over the world for child support. So he went through a lot of trouble, you know, uh, because, you know, he, he was saying rightly he was not given a choice. But the dream, you know, the dream warned him, warned him. And his friend had a dream for, for his friend. You know, you can do that if you have someone that needs help. And if they are open to this um, uh, idea of dreaming for solutions, incubating for solutions, <laughs> you can have an answer given from your own inner guide to them if they are not open to have their answers given to them directly in dreams. Yeah, there's lots of examples like this. People have another, I'll give you another one. <clears throat> he was actually uh, a family, fr uh, f uh, a family member, my family member. It was having, uh, had a dream and she said, um, uh, it was, this was, this was said to me, said, uh, she said that, um, uh, the friend that I was seeing at the time said to her to, t to tell me not to wake her up. What I was communicating to that uh, person at that time is what I'm communicating to you, that all the answers are already within you. You have your own inner guidance. You don't need to be stuck in the outside society and its answers. Yeah, You have your own individual uh, you know, your own mystic, your own personal way of communicating with the soul. You don't need mediators. You don't need society. Society is the second womb. I will make a separate video about this. What have we got on time? Okay, we'll go to me. Society is the second womb. Your first womb is your mother. Then your society takes over and it looks after you. Until you are born out of society into your ma true maturity. And then that, matu that being born out of society is spiritual rebirth or enlightenment. You find all the answers you're looking for are already within you. Then you become like a real mystical shaman or a real poet. You begin, you begin to transfer your life uh, to, so that you live on the margins of society. You no longer need the society to look after you. You have left that childhood behind. Now you're mature because you get all your answers from within. Okay, so you can get answers for your physical symptoms in dreams or you can get answers for others. You can get answers about anything in your dreams. Like Nikola Tesla had answers for his dreams. The, you know, like I shared with you, many others that had answers. <coughs> the guy that invented the benzene he had uh, dreams, uh, you know, that showed him the, the, the structure of the molecules. Or Einstein, you know, they all, I do have all my, all my answers that I really share with you now, and I've written books about that, <coughs> came in my dreams, always. Dreams are a great way of making contact with the soul, with the spirit, yeah. That's the divine feminine. The direct experiences are divine feminine. The religions and society and answers looking for answers. The, se the, 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 the second womb is masculine, the masculine rational mind. Okay, so that's what I wanted to talk to you about today and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.